So we're going to talk today a little bit about metalogic. Now, up until this point in the course, we've mainly been talking about the logic itself. What can we deduce inside of propositional logic, the natural deduction for it? Or what are the semantic entailments that we can make, or the semantic interpretations that we have of the propositions in the formula and so on? Um, but this is all within the logic itself, propositional logic. Now, metalogic, uh, as the name implies, we're taking a step back and we're looking at the logic itself from the outside in, right? So it's kind of like Inception. We're, we're taking a, a step back and we're viewing things and saying, let's see what we can prove or let's see what we can say about this logic by reasoning about it at a higher level. So we're going to discuss different concepts or ideas about the logic itself. And in doing so, we use um, methods and techniques and ideas that are outside of the logic. Now there's three key things that we're going to dive deeper in future lectures uh, for this course uh, that involve the meta logic of propositional logic. Um, the first is consistency, the second is correctness, and the third is completeness. Now all three of these are things that sort of tie together uh, the proof system that we have and the semantics that go with that proof system. So the first up is consistency. Now we say that a theory is consistent if there's no way to derive a contradiction. So consistency, no way to derive or arrive at a contradiction. Now in the case of natural deduction for propositional logic, this is simply saying that there's no way for us to deduce bottom. Right? If you recall, if we are somehow able to deduce the bottom symbol, then we're able to deduce anything, right? And so in saying that uh, a logical system is consistent, it's essentially saying that there's no inconsistencies within it. So there's no you know, application of rules that'll arrive at a contradiction somewhere inside of that proof system. Now this is a property that we care about because we don't really want to use theories that are inherently inconsistent. Right? We, we, we want the, the proof system that we have, especially if we have bottom elimination where we can prove anything, we want it to be consistent, otherwise it's a little bit useless to us. So this is why it's an important, um, it's an important tool to be able to prove that uh, a particular theory is, in, is consistent because then that makes it useful for us to use. Um, and so one of the lectures that you'll see here dives a little bit deeper into consistency for natural deduction of propositional logic. Now the next step is correctness, and this says that everything we can prove is semantically entailed. Now this is an interesting one because it ties together the idea of natural deduction and proofs that we have here, the sequence in the first part of this course, with the semantics of it, the semantics of propositional logic. And so to write it down a little bit loosely, what, what this means in mathematical notation, it's saying that if we are able to go from a set of premises and we are able to find a natural deduction proof to be able to prove a particular formula psi, then this means that the theory represented, the semantic interpretation of those premises, semantically entails this formula as well. Right? So every model of this is also a model of that. And, and so this says that if we are able to find a proof, then it's correct in some sort of sense, right? It's the right thing to say. Um, so if our theory was incorrect, we might be able to prove things that aren't necessarily semantically entailed, right? So this, this is kind of something you really want to avoid with a theory. You don't want to be able to prove things that are incorrect. So this is an important property to have as well. Now somebody has to go and prove these properties for a theory and uh, propositional logic is just one possible theory of many that we're teaching you in this course. Um, but it's very important to be able to establish these things for a particular theory. Now in particular, these two things combined are important for any theory that you might want to take a look at. And when you combine the two of them, you get something called soundness. And so we say that a theory is sound 
if it is both consistent and it's correct. Right? And this means that you're not going to be able to find inherent contradictions within the theory itself, and you're not going to be able to prove things that you just shouldn't be able to prove. Right? So every theory that we want to work with should have these properties. Now the third property is completeness, and this is kind of the converse of correctness here. And this says that everything that is semantically entailed is provable, right? And so it's kind of the reverse of what you see here. We say that if a set of premises semantically entails a particular formula, then it must be the case that there is a proof to go from these premises to that particular formula. Now, if you think about combining the natural deduction and the semantics uh, for propositional logic, this is extremely powerful to have. If you were to take a look at uh, a conjectured sequence, for example, and you want to say, let's find a proof in order to do this, if you can show that it is not semantically entailed, then you can be assured that there's no proof in order to do so. right? If you can find that it is semantically entailed, then a proof must exist. And so the fact that a semantic entailment means that there exists a proof to get there, this is what we refer to as completeness for a theory. And this can be extremely helpful, again, if you're trying to decide whether or not uh, you should keep looking for a proof. If you have completeness in your theory and you know it's semantically entailed, you know a proof has to exist. And so you can just look a little harder and then find it. Now, completeness is something that's nice to have for the theories, but it's not something that you always have. And so we'll see in the latter part of the course that some theories that you might take a look at are sound, so they're consistent and they're complete, but they aren't, or sorry, they're sound, which means that they are consistent and they are correct, but they are incomplete. So you might know that uh, there's a semantic entailment in there, but you don't necessarily know if there's a way to find that proof. And so these are the three concepts of meta logic. And again, it's meta because we're talking about the theory itself and we use language that's external to the logical theory in order to make these distinctions. And so in other lectures, you'll find uh, a deeper dive into the consistency, the correctness, and the completeness of propositional logic. Um, and uh, a little bit of a hint of how that uh, has sort of come about historically and how we uh, sort of start to prove these things. The proofs for these three threads, it's beyond the scope of the course, but they're very fundamental and important results in order for us to be able to do any sort of reasoning and uh, you know, trust in the reasoning that we do, the proofs that we find and the entailments that we make. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.